Hey everybody, Fred Minnick here, and in today's video, I'm gonna tell you the 10 bourbons or 10 bourbon types that I always have in my home. So these are house bourbons that my wife and I enjoy that are always at our bar. This, is, this has nothing to do with ratings or competitions um, or anything. This has to do with my family's personal taste and you know it's all over the place by the way so and i think when you when you taste professionally uh it is sometimes hard to actually have a go-to daily drinker so i actually have about 30 of them but these are 10 that are kind of like if i'm in the mood for this uh, i will have it and also there's there's a must have that my wife will absolutely gut punch me if I don't have in the house. I'm kidding. No one take that as a for real thing. My wife does not gut punch me at all. That does not happen. I'm kidding about that too. All right. So we'll get that one out of the way. So if I do not have this product right here in our home, uh, my wife is on me all the time. So Jacqueline loves bookers. And by the way, I love bookers too. So it's an easy win. The problem is, is Booker's is not around like it used to be. So this used to be on the shelves all the time. And now it's kind of like flying off the shelves. Uh, and, you know, for good reason. I mean, it's really good uh, bourbon. I mean, it cracked a, my, you know, my top 10 last year coming in at number six. The, the tea batch did. So that's what this one right here. So this is really, really, really good bourbon. Now, what mood am I in for when I want this? So you hear me use the note cornbread quite often. Well, cornbread is a note that I find very prominent in uh, Booker's. Cornbread and honey. So if I'm in the mood for that kind of like sweet and savory flavor profile, I often reach for Booker's. I also happen to have set on a writer's roundtable. A few years ago, they used to invite in prominent writers to uh you know select a batch of bookers and i was on a couple of those and i got to learn how they do it and it, it was about basically about cherishing the memory of booker no and fred would tell us a story about uh, fred being his son uh, would tell us a story about booker and we would build a profile based on that so that's uh, so bookers is kind of special to me for a lot of reasons but um yeah, so Booker's is always in the home, whether in little sample bottles or in a full-blown bottle like that. Uh, I actually would love to meet somebody who has collected every Booker's ever. I've seen this with people with Maker's Mark. Uh, I've seen it with uh, the Woodford Reserve Derby bottles. You know, I've seen people collect every Pappy, every BTAC. But I'm not seeing anyone who's done every Booker. So if you know someone who has done that, drop it in the comment section. I would actually like to reach out to them and and uh, and find out. Uh, so and one that I this is not one my wife cares for. This is one that I'm in the mood for a lot, and it came in fourth in 2019 for my top 100, and that is Four Roses Small Batch Select. So Four Roses Small Batch Select is what I'm picking up when I'm in the mood for a big old cinnamon note so this has a big old one-two punch of cinnamon and vanilla cinnamon is the dominant note in four roses small batch select i find it to be the dominant note in almost all of four roses releases and this is such a great pour such a great great pour and i always have this in the house in fact for my private tastings uh, that i do for corporates uh, like some of my corporate clients are like Google, uh, which I've done in the past, Visa, a lot of Amazon, uh, Amazon's uh, like storage, I think it's called. What it's a lot of Amazon stuff. I've done a lot of private corporate tastings for people like that. And Four Roses is always in the mix. So I've probably in the last two years, I've probably bought um, 70 cases for you know for my corporate clients so 70 cases through a retailer just in case you are a distributor wondering if i'm not using the three-tier system why yes i am using a three-tier system 
Mr. Distributor. Uh, anyway, I'm having some fun there. So Four Roses, uh, small batch select, always in our home. Now, another one here is actually, I'm just going to use this bottle as kind of a, kind of a overall for the brand, uh, Wild Turkey. So there's always a Wild Turkey product on our shelves. This happens to be the Rare Breed Rye, which interestingly was the only bottle I could find in my office. I think we are out of Rare Breed in my office and in my home, which tells me that it's time to go to the store and buy some more Rare Breed bourbon. But we always have either Rare Breed Rye, Wild Turkey 101, um, or Rare Breed Bourbon. Sometimes we'll have Kentucky Spirit in there. Sometimes we'll have a Master's Keep. But there's always a Wild Turkey in the rotation. And, you know, Jacqueline, Jacqueline is a Wild Turkey fan. But if, if she's choosing between Booker's and Rare Breed, she's always going to choose Booker's. One product she may pick over Booker's. I'll tell you that here in a minute. But for me, I'm reaching for wild turkey when I'm wanting kind of like this earthy uh, funkiness to it. That's that's what I'm looking for. I'm looking for kind of like some some rawness, some really some rich earth. And that sounds weird if you're just kind of getting into the tasting scene. But earth is uh, kind of best described as like, um, you know, close something close would be like mushrooms before you've like washed them off. You know, sometimes you can get a mushroom, pluck it right out of the ground and eat it. That's very earthy. Now, I don't know how many campers we have here that are doing that. You know, if you know your mushrooms, which one will get you high, which one will kill you, which one you can eat. But there is a very distinct earth note in, uh, in wild turkey that I crave from time to time. And a little shout out to my boy, uh, Rare Bird. I'm wearing a, a T-shirt he gave me. This is the uh, DSP number for uh, for Wild Turkey. Now, a lot of you all know me for wearing ascots, and you've been commenting on my videos that I haven't been wearing ascots in my videos lately. Um, the fact is, I've been going to the gym a lot. I've been uh, in jujitsu, and I get through the day, and I'm like, Ugh, I don't want to get dressed up. And so a lot of T-shirts and a lot of hoodies – uh, have been uh, what how these videos have been made. So apologies. This is not an imposter. It's not AI. It's really me. Okay, so now I mentioned earth. I also love the taste of grains. Jacqueline does not. She actually vehemently opposes the style of bourbon that I'm going to present to you now. And in fact, I would say 90% of the traditional Kentucky bourbon drinkers hate these two products here. But there are times that I, I, I really crave an oily, very uh, vegetal, very grainy, like just bright, biting into a corn, corn of the cob, eating like a real doughy uh, roll or having a grainy piece of bread. And when I'm craving one of those things, um, I'm, I'm reaching for Woodenville. So this is coming outside of Kentucky. This is in... Uh, this is actually in Washington, or I'm re reaching for something from Spirit, uh, Spirits of French Lick. So these are two these are two distillers that I feel like do an incredible job of really accentuating the grain, allowing the grain to speak for itself. And I believe Spirits of French Lick has a has a phrase called "respect the grain." And I think that if you are if you are a whiskey person and you you like whiskey but you loathe the flavor of grain in um, in a bourbon, you're really not a whiskey drinker. You are a brand drinker. If you like the taste of grain, whether it is it is barley or it's rye or it's corn, um, you've got, you know, if you're a whiskey drinker, you have to eventually find a product that, you're, you'll eventually find a product that has those flavors in there. And if you're automatically dismissive of that, you're not a categorical drinker. You are a brand drinker of, of brands that that have certain notes that you like. And there's nothing wrong with that. But these right here, this is kind of to me, this is how this is this is a beautiful expression. Beautiful expression of of bourbon that is showing grain. Over time, 
that grain will become less and less. It has, has it more time in the barrel. But I love the taste of grain when I'm in the particular mood. In terms of what mood is that, uh, honestly, I really like, you know, tasting one of these when I'm cooking. So if I'm cooking some barbecue, if I'm cooking, um, you know, Coco Vaughn or something like that at home, I like a grain forward bourbon. I don't really know why. I just do. So like I said, this is not about a rating system. This is not about any kind of scores I've done before. This is purely about what we have in the house all the time and what we like to drink. So for all intents and purposes, the showing of those two was kind of a, was not a showing of like, the, those two represented one. So that was just kind of for me to tell you the story of why I like a grain forward bourbon. And those two are usually in the house, but if they're not in the house, it'll be a representation of a grain forward bourbon from another distillery. I always have to have a bottle of barrel in the house. Barrel, in my opinion, is the best blending house in the United States. Like what they have been able to do over a decade is incredible. And this is actually the very uh, the very release that won the San Francisco World Spirits Competition, uh, batch 11. And that was, this is the bottle that I described as being a marzipan bomb and kind of led to, you know, led to everybody making fun of me for, uh, you know, calling out marzipan. Good times. Uh, and now I have my own cl whiskey club called Club Marzipan. So I make fun of myself too. But if you haven't had marzipan, go to the store, get you some marzipan. At any rate, the reason why I always like to have barrel uh, in the house is because there's so much nuance to their releases. There's so many different, uh, so many different flavors there, and so I'm just really, really excited about uh, seeing, seeing what how things change from bottle to bottle. Big fan of Barrel, and they are always in the house. Now this brand here kind of represents one distillery, so. When I crave Heaven Hill, which Heaven Hill um, is a is a kind of a light caramel, heavy vanilla, little nutmeg, touch of cinnamon. You know, that's a very basic you know profile description of Heaven Hill. These are two products that I can find anywhere I go: Evan Williams Bottled and Bond, and Evan Williams uh, Black Label. Now these are what we're making cocktails with at home. This is something that we are using, you know, maybe with a couple pieces of ice in if we're just like in the backyard playing catch, something like that. But these are these are not these are not products that I'm looking to overthink. Uh, Heaven Hill has a ton of limited edition products or quarterly products that we can say are also home bourbons. But the fact is, Elijah Craig Barrel Proof, Larceny Barrel Proof, uh, Old Fitzgerald uh, Decanter Series are not widely available. And I wanted this list to be mostly widely available. And so you may ask, like, would you choose the Evan Williams over over the basic Elijah Craig? And I had to, I had to like, really think about this for a second. Like, I kind of had this internal debate. Uh, would I choose it? over uh, Elijah Craig and the answer the answer is probably probably 51 percent yes and 49 percent no reason being I'm still I'm still a little upset they got rid of the age statement on Elijah Craig I know I know I know I've got issues but if I'm looking at the label and we're talking about a house bourbon. I don't want a house bourbon that's going to remind me of a bad moment. I don't want a house bourbon that's going to remind me of a bad time. So that's why I would be picking up the <laughs> Evan Williams Bottle and Bond, which has beaten a lot of major products in my blind tastings, by the way, if you go back and look through my YouTube channel series of blind tastings. But uh, <laughs> so the backstory is Elijah Craig dropped their age statement. I was really pissed off about that. Still am to a lesser degree. And, um, you know, I, I wouldn't say I boycott him, but I just didn't review their stuff, review the Elijah Craig for a while. And, um, and basically 
if it's in my home, I don't want to look at it and think about like, well, it could, it'd be better if it had a 12 year age statement. So as, as petty as that may sound, that's not, that's why I choose Evan Williams at a, at a 51%, 51% of the time over Elijah Craig as my house bourbon. Ask me next year. That may change. Okay. So this next one, this next one is our, is in, is our house bourbon. Uh, for sentimental reasons, when I was uh, dating my wife, she uh, would order Maker's Mark on the rocks. And so that bourbon was really the – watching her drink that bourbon was really the first time in my life I had seen people sip bourbon. I mean, I, we had taken shots. We had been in Coke. It had been, you know, in Listerine bottles when I was in the – when I was in Iraq – uh, but we, you know, my friends, we never really, we, we, we straight up didn't sip it. We, we drank it, like drink it, drink it, drink it. And watching my wife sip bourbon was a very monumental step in me transitioning to becoming a taster. And so this will always be in the house because of that reason. I also happen to like Maker's Mark. And what I am in the mood for a you know, a vanilla forward with a little bit of oak bitterness and a touch of caramel. That's what I'm, that's what I'm picking up. I also think that Maker's Mark is the best bourbon to pair with barbecue. And I have done many trials with that. Maker's Mark is a great pairing with barbecue. So uh, that's why Maker's Mark is always going to be in the house. Also, if we have guests over, you know, they understand Maker's Mark. But if people are coming to my house, they're usually not asking for makers. So remember I told you earlier that there's one product that my wife will choose over bookers. This is it right here. Old Forester 1920. I get this in as many tastings as I can. When I say tastings, my private tastings. And it is a it is a banger. It is one of those bourbons that you can put in any spirits competition and it's got a shot of winning. I don't know how available it is, though, nationally. I just know in Kentucky, you go to a liquor barn, it's going to be stocked on the shelves. And so, you know, the house bourbons are typically ones that we can get. Uh, the Bookers, uh, of everything that I've showed you, the Bookers is really the only one that we're not able to get as frequently as we would like. But Old Forester 1920, touch of cherry in it, big old nutmeg, nutmeg uh, bomb, but mostly, you know, my, my wife will take a sip of it and go, mm. and to me, that that's priceless. It's worth it's worth its uh, weight in a bottle. So, yeah, uh, Old Forester always in our house. Uh, this is uh, this may surprise a lot of people, but sometimes I have a hankering for peanut butter. I love the taste of peanut butter or almond butter or what's another butter that I like? One of those things called sunflower seed butter. Very oily, but I like it. I get a lot of those kind of like nut butters in Rowan's Creek. In fact, I get in a lot of the Willet products. So this is distilled at Willet. Uh, I I like this a lot. In fact, when I did uh, when I put a list together for Southern Living of like what's a must-have bourbon, I put Rowan's Creek in that running, and it really surprised a lot of people because I don't really I don't really put this in my you know, it, it's not in my private tastings. It hasn't been, I don't think it's been in blind bourbon yet. Um, but it is something we always have in the house and we buy it and we, it's, it's a great pour. And we'll go through to give you an idea of like how much we drink is we don't, we don't drink a ton. I mean, we'll, we'll go through two or three bottles of Rowan's Creek in a year and maybe like 17 cases of bookers. I'm joking. I'm joking. That'd probably be the entire, you know, zip codes allocation out here which may or may not actually be true, but it's not true. It could be, though. All right, so Rowan's Creek is definitely one. Now, everything that I've told you has been either a Kentucky bourbon or a craft bourbon. The one that I'm bringing up now is a very popular source bourbon that they're, they're using stocks from MGP, doing some contract distilling there, doing their own unique blending. All right, take that back. There was also Barrel. Barrel was uh, Barrel's also a blender, so... This is the second non-distiller producer. Um, but it's a smoke wagon. Smoke wagon small batch. And there are times 
I really want the flavor profile of MGP. And I can't really, the best way I can describe how MGP feels on my palate, it will, it'll kind of like cover my palate, it'll cover my tongue, and then it will start to really populate the roof of my mouth. And when I'm in the mood for that kind of a mouth feel, like I want to kind of feel it around and like think about it, uh, I, I will reach for, I will reach for Smoke Wagon. Now, it doesn't hurt that Aaron... Uh, the owner of Smoke Wagon has sent me a lot of really good products, and I have kind of like grown to like his um, his style, like his blending style. So I think I think there is a little bit to that. Like I don't think I, I don't think it hurts that he sent me his best stuff. And I also did a barrel pick. Uh, I did a 14 year old barrel pick a couple years ago. That was pretty damn awesome. Um, so. I think that I think I don't think that if he had gone through that length or if I had not done that barrel pick, I don't know if Smoke Wagon would be up here. But I kind of fell I kind of fell in love with that flavor profile and I do really thoroughly think that MGP, the Lawrenceburg, Indiana distillery, formerly a Seagram's plant, is one of the best distiller distilleries in the country. They make great whiskey and there's no way anybody could argue me out of thinking that they make great whiskey. So that would be the last one on my list of house bourbons. What is on your house bourbon list? Put it in the comment section. I would love to know. Remember, this is about what you like. It's not about like a score. It's not about impressing anyone. It's about what you want, what you like. And, uh, it's your house, so your bourbons. But that's going to do it here. Also, a big shout-out to Club Marzipan. Thank you for helping me put some lists together uh, that will be dropping here on uh, on YouTube throughout the rest of the year. If you would like to become a Club Marzipan member, we've got uh, barrel picks dropping every month. we got an OKI barrel available now, a six-year-old MGP. Speaking of MGP, you can go into the description and learn more about it. But thank you all so much for tuning in. Be safe out there. And remember, vodka sucks unless it's being used to clean up a dead cat. Long story. Cheers. <laughs>